So hey everybody, you know, most major corporations spend billions of dollars a year in their advertising, which is certainly one billion more than what most of us have, right? So many of us small businesses and musicians are working with uh, very little money, sometimes even as little as a thousand dollars for the year. So we need to make sure to use that money wisely. And this brings us to the topic of our discussion and to point number one, which is research. Something a lot of people forget about doing, right? So Ira, please explain a little bit uh, to us the importance of doing research before um, jumping into your advertising. And you've created something called an MIS, Marketing Information System. Right. You, I've created a marketing information system and you're absolutely right at the beginning of this process you do the market research part of the marketing information system and the reason you want to do that is you don't want to throw your money down the rat hole right, right? right. because you want to really find out who your target audience is uh -huh. if you're a musician or no matter what your uh, profession is you want to be able to focus your marketing on a group of people and you want to use a terminology that they understand. And so the only way to really know that is to do some research and say, who are my customers? And there are a lot of cases where people have the wrong audience. Right. They thought that this was their audience and it's really here. Right, right. And you only find that out by doing it and then saying, oh no, they, didn't, they weren't interested, but finding out that these people started buying it. Sure, sure. And, and besides just narrowing in on maybe who your target market is and maybe some of the, the words that they, they might uh, sort of uh, gravitate towards, are, are there some other things? For example, um, you know, any sort of, uh, you know, maybe, maybe digging deeper into maybe, you know, where they buy or maybe when they buy or maybe, um, you know, any emotional characteristics or factors. Like for example, they might be interested in supporting certain uh, groups or causes or something of that. Would that also be helpful in the, this marketing information system? Oh yeah, very helpful. So whenever I do a, a focus group for a client, one of the things I ask them are, what, are they, what do you read every day? What, what do you watch on TV? What do you listen to on the radio? Mm -hmm. Uh, what podcast do you listen to? I imagine if you're a musician, uh, what, what uh, music do you stream or, sure. you know, and, and how do you do it and how many times a day? And you learn as much as you can about that. And then you want to make sure that you're advertising or you're doing something or you're getting your brand, your name, your logo and slogan in their brain when they do that. Right. Okay. Now this leads us to point number two, which is what I call insights. And, um, uh, you know, essentially, uh, look, you guys, I mean, when I talk about this in some of my classes, sometimes the, 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 uh, the students don't get, they just think it's like, oh, let's find out like how old our, our customers generally are and like blah, 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 blah. They don't understand now how to make the connection with that research. Uh, like, in other words, what does it all mean? So, for example, um, if you uh, are an alternative rock band and you discover that, you know, your fans are alternative rockers, let's just say, for example, and they like to skateboard, some uh, people might not sort of get the connection there. They might be like, okay, so what? We know that they skateboard. And I go, well, is there a possibility maybe that you get your music licensed in X Games events, let's just say, for example, or maybe you find out that they are into tattoos and now maybe playing a tattoo festival or getting into a skateboard magazine. Or, 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 so in other words, you have to use these things you learn um, and decide sort of how you're going to use them, putting the two together. Can you talk a little bit about this? Yes. So what I would do is I would go to the skateboard companies that are selling these skateboards and say, don't you think this would be more exciting if it had some music behind it? Right. And then that's how it would be my entry. And so that's what I would call my piggyback a zero budget strategy uh -huh. where you ride the coattails of somebody else right I see okay and uh, but you but again you're making the connection right in other words the research that you've done now you're sort of making a connection with how that research could be valuable in essence right right okay all right good so now let's finally move on to, to part number uh, three 
which is uh, what I call, I mean, decision. But I mean, what I mean by this is, is, and we've kind of started to talk about it already, but um, ultimately now that you have your research and you sort of found out sort of what it means, now you have to make certain decisions about, you know, the media channels that you're going to uh, buy into, et cetera. Um, can you talk a, a, a little bit about this? And what I mean is, is what channel should you choose? Of the $1,000 you have, should you pour all of that into just the internet or should you break it up into maybe some, uh, you know, postcards in the mail or maybe, uh, uh, you know, paying for the open bar <laughs> at one of your performances, maybe breaking it up a little bit or, or, or should you, is it bad to put all your money on sort of on the internet sort of uh, number, so to speak? Well, if that's where your audience is, it's mm -hmm. not bad. Okay. But if that's not where your audience is, that would be that bad. That would be horrible, sure. But the bad thing is that you said $1,000, and that's valuable to a small company. Sure. So um, I wrote a book called Zero Budget Marketing, and if you do need to spend money, you get someone else to pay for it. Mm -hmm. Uh, so you really are netting zero budget on this video uh, of marketing. You're marketing, right, uh, right. W When I walk around the campus, you know, um, I could be marketing. I, I don't necessarily sure. do that. But, sure, Yeah, uh, and you've talked about how, like, uh, you know, as an instructor, as an author, as a lecturer, <laughs> um, just, you know, uh, uh, participating, writing an article for someone that has a popular blog or participating in this interview uh, these are ways that you can get your name out there and, exactly. and it doesn't essentially cost anything except for you, your time <laughs> you could you could write articles mm -hmm. or you could have uh, LA Times who's coming to interview me to, tomorrow uh, come and interview you so th right. there's a, bu a bunch of different options there sure sure um, and what a lot of artists are doing now is they're getting on other people's playlists on Spotify you know to get mm -hmm. featured on their playlists other people that are uh, promoting their playlists and then by virtue of getting on their playlists you're being promoted by them you know so mm -hmm. there's lots of things you can do like this. A, a couple right. things that um, that that I've done that has been very successful is try to find big companies that share the same audience as me and then trying to sort of form some sort of collaborative uh, effort so for example I filmed all of my uh, uh, lectures um, put it onto a, a DVD and then pitched it to a big company that made all the DVDs for free and then gave it out to each one of their clients that purchased uh, product from them mm -hmm. as sort of a gift. So by virtue of doing that, I was getting my name out to all of their clients mm -hmm. and they were providing a gift to their clients, making them happy. And of course, so it was a win-win-win situation. So you need to think about things like this. Yeah, that's what write, uh, writing on social media will do for you. So um, I've written uh, for a lot of different than social media. I've been writing for LinkedIn mainly mm -hmm. uh, lately, and I really like writing for them because it's real easy. And I'm hitting my target audience, which are business people. Right. And I said, why didn't I do this earlier? Right. But uh, I have vice presidents, presidents, CEOs, chairmen of the board contacting me. That's telling right. me that you know they're interested in this or that sure. or the other thing. Sure. So I'm reaching audiences that I've I would have never reached before, right. and it doesn't cost me anything other than my time to write the article, right. which That's I would do anyway. Thank you very much. Uh, oh, we're doing the two fisted. Two fisted. Oh, wow. That was beautiful. Um, so a lot more of these ideas that Ira is talking about are in his book. Um, was it zero? Uh, zero budget marketing. Zero budget marketing. Yeah. I also like the book um, Nuts and Bolts of Marketing. So please check those out. Also be sure to check out Music Marketing for the DIY Musician in its second revision now, where a lot of these topics are applied to the music business. So please check that out.